All right, uh, we are here to do a review of the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this because of course uh, I don't know how to speak Mandarin. Uh, one M-I-I, one me, I have no idea. Um, this is the uh, B08, B08 Plus. This is uh, a Bluetooth receiver combination power amplifier thing, okay? I bought this off of eBay. It, uh, after taxes, I think about eighty-two dollars uh, U.S. here, and we are going to unbox it. And it just turns out that I, I think I need a tool here to puncture this plastic. I'm just going to use a. I got a little uh, drill here and a pin vise, and I got a lot going on in the shop here, so I didn't have a a real clean area to to work on this. Um, had to move some stuff aside. <clears throat> Doing some amplifiers here. Um, this will be the uh, non-technical portion of this review. I will. The second half of this will be very technical. We'll do a full teardown of it. Um, I'll put it through its paces. I will uh, <clears throat> talk tech, <laughs> and we'll see what they did on the engineering side with it and uh, how they designed the circuits, um, what it does and doesn't do from a very technical standpoint. <clears throat> and that would bore a lot of people who just want to know does it sound nice. Um, so this thing, if you read the reviews that are on Amazon right now, one of the biggest complaints that's out there is that if you have it set to anything but Bluetooth, <clears throat> that it will not disengage the Bluetooth. So we're definitely going to test and see if that truly is the case. Because um, I do not know whether or not our experience will belie those claims, but we are going to make sure we determine that. So we get our little pieces of paper that uh, presumably have some instructions that you probably aren't going to read and we have our box and our box has stuff in it and there's plastic because well because it comes from China and when you pack things and you happen to be packing them in China you use copious quantities of plastic. Um, <clears throat> do not ask me why, I do not know. But we should send all of this stuff back to China because they send too much of it over here. Sorry, there, that's my first review. Stop using so much freaking plastic, okay? There's other more earth-friendly materials that you could use to package this stuff, so start using it. Um, this is it, this is what it looks like. This is the whole thing, and I will move this slowly so that you can see all six sides of it. You got two left. <laughs> there's the left side, and there's the right side. I'm going to give you a, a little bit of time to to get some uh, experience with the front of it there. And you can see from my hands. My hands are rather small hands, uh, but you can see you know the general size of. If I had a, a soda can or something like that, I'd be able to tell you. Let's see here. I'll just. But you get a, the idea of how, how big it is, kind of like, okay, so here's my head and here's how big this thing is. It's, it's, it's about the size, it fits in the palm of your hand. So, and it has uh, four binding posts on the back, just like the pictures. Um, so, because we have a class D amplifier, okay, uh, I guess I'm going to get a little technical here. Um, <clears throat> Class D, by the way, does not mean digital. It, it has to do with the way the way the amplifier switches the power. So all amplifiers basically do is take higher amounts of power and turn them on and off really fast. And they do that in accordance with the sound, and that's it. So an amplifier essentially is a switch. Actually, <laughs> an amplifier is a broken oscillator, and an oscillator is a broken amplifier but that's a tech joke so um, we have a rather hefty power supply I mean look at the 
look at the comparison. The power supply is practically the same volumetric dimensions as, as the actual amplifier. And the reason that is, is because with a class D amplifier, you have <clears throat> the ability to run a lot of power in a small package. That's, that's why they did a class, B, class D amplifier. That's the whole point. There's only two reasons to use one. Um, one is heat. Class D amplifier, if you actually design the circuit properly, uh, will produce less heat. And also, because it produces less heat, you don't have to have a big old heat sink and a big old fan. And you can run this thing without... Uh, and the other the other reason is so so small size you don't have to have like you know four and a half pounds of aluminum for a heat sink and the other reason is efficiency um, <clears throat> when you run a different kind of an amplifier like a class A or a class B or a class AB amplifier we won't talk about C because C doesn't really matter for audio uh, but there is such a thing as a class C amplifier and the IRF nerds here will will appreciate that um, <clears throat> but other types of amplifiers, A, B, and A, B, you end up having to put a lot more power into the amplifier and it draws power in its quiescent state, um, whereas a class D amplifier, not the same thing. Almost all of the power, almost, all of the power that you put into it is coming out of it in the form of sound, which is, which is what you want. So it's very efficient and it doesn't produce a lot of heat which means they can put it into a package this size and not have to have big heat sinks and cooling fans okay now <clears throat> there is some um if class d amplifiers you lose some things it's a compromise it's a trade-off um, but you can get uh fairly good sounding class d amplifiers and we're going to hope for the best with this uh, let's see here so this is your basic uh, IEC or kettle cord. Some people call this a kettle cord. This is what they call an IEC connector. Uh, but it's a basic, you know, this would go in the back of a computer or a computer monitor or anything. So here's your power supply. Plug this in. It's a straight up switcher power supply. And the back of it says here, that this will put out 24 volts, yep, okay, and 4 amps. So 24 volts is actually, I think, the upper rail voltage for the, uh, the Texas Instruments uh, Class D amplifier chips that they use in here. I think they're going to use, we'll, we'll talk about this in the second part of the interview, but I expect to see two of them in here. So <clears throat> I expect to see one in stereo mode um, for the... Um, uh, well, maybe they won't do it that way. Anyway, I expect to certainly see one of them in, in stereo mode for the, the, the power amplifier. And maybe they'll use two of them, one for each channel. We'll, we'll see. But either way, 24 volts is the maximum rated voltage for that, uh, for that device. Okay, so you got your DC connector. You can go right in the back with it. Boom, like that. And then, then you're hooked up here, okay? So you wouldn't be able to run this like off of a cigarette lighter jack. It just that's not possible because it's 24 volts rather than 12. Um, they would have a considerable amount of difficulty running this much power at four amps. You're talking 24 volts. You're you're almost yeah. See now, there's no possible way in this world without a buck converter that they could ever get a hundred watts. 24 volts at, I'm going to read this again here, because the output, the maximum rated output, 24 volts at 4 amps, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, four, you're 4 shy of 100 watts there on, on the output, so, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're trying to exaggerate it just a few watt by about 4 watts, because this is, this is 96 watts. There's no way you can get 100 watts out of 96 watt power supply. It ain't happening. So this might be about a 90 watt amplifier. They say it's 100. Sorry, if you're running maybe 115, 120 watts, I might give you 100 watts on the output of this, but uh-uh. 
All right, so we got that going. Uh, let's see here. Um, what else do we got? Oh, yeah. So we got a we got a a line input here. It's a three and a half millimeter uh, line input. That's the the orange one. And uh, so I don't know what it says. It says OPT. Oh, optical. Okay, so you can have an optical input. You can have an analog input, or you can have Bluetooth Bluetooth input. Now, I would have myself preferred to have a separate power button instead of having the the, the click on volume. Now, there might be a reason for this because when you there's there's another technical thing with Class D amplifiers, and it depends on there's 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 all sorts of things about having to to filter the output of the amplifier and having number networks and I won't go into that but you have to be careful with the design of a power amplifier like this using these kind of chips um, so that when you turn it on and off you don't get a big pop and I do not know because I haven't looked at the circuit enough to know what they're doing yet um, I like to have a power amplifier where I set the volume and I just leave it there and that's how it always is and I just push it on and push it off okay but if you have the input set like this and you just turn it on or turn it off if you have a sorry to say this a cheap circuit you can get a really loud pop so maybe what they did was a very inexpensive approach to turn it on with the input grounded or almost grounded and then you raise the input. You actually begin to to unground that input, and then you don't get such a big pop when you turn it on. We'll see that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> so, what I would like to know, and I, okay, I won't go through how to pair this because this is a review rather than a tutorial. Um, <clears throat> I do like the fact that it, it is compact. I mean, this is one of the nice things about this is if you were for instance, you wanted to have some stereo speakers in your dorm room or something like that, and you didn't have a lot of room. Uh, depending on how how good this ends up sounding, I might recommend this for somebody that, that has you know uh, an efficiency one room apartment, something where they just don't have a lot of space for you know a big setup or a two band or something like that. We're going to uh, we're going to use one of these speakers here. Um, so what this is, this is a, an energy, this is a, uh, oh geez, uh, energy TA. Okay, so I have here the powered subwoofer. Uh, this is an energy uh, S8.3 subwoofer. And this one does not have an optical output or optical input. So it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be uh, analog. And uh, I have to go get the, uh, the analog uh, cable for that. Well, uh, I got to tell you guys, um, you got to have a decent pair of speakers. The speakers I was originally going to test this out with, completely blown. They're worthless. Um, in the trash heap. I've been listening to this thing now for probably about an hour. And I am duly impressed. Uh, let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to turn off some of the stuff here uh, so that we can hear me instead of the music. But uh, so first thing to notice is that uh, on the side of this thing, there's there's some vents here, just a little bit of airflow through here. Uh, it doesn't even get. I wouldn't even call this like warm. You can kind of sort of tell that there's a little heat coming off of it. Um, I've been running it pretty hot. Um, I mean, it's ours pretty high as far as the volume goes, and it's uh, it's not heating up. So. Uh, got some decent speakers, um, and I actually tried it out on the. Uh, I got some bass reflex speakers uh, here in the shop. Can't really easily show you those. They're oh, let's see here. They're they're the big black things on the walls there. Uh, these are uh, I think they're two way. I think maybe three way bass reflex speakers. Um, they're they're pretty good speakers, uh, and and I can compare them to. To what I normally use in the shop here. This is a, an Abcom GA535. Um, I run a BSR EQ uh, 14XR, uh, and then I have another another one of these. Actually, it's it's the MII, the one MII uh, <coughs> Bluetooth receiver, which is this guy right here. Highly recommended. Um, <coughs> 
I run this uh, in the shop, and I tried this. Uh, I tried this amplifier out with those speakers, and I'm happy to say that it is uh, really almost as good as the uh, as the Adcom. So, as a matter of fact, uh, if and when that Adcom does uh, <laughs> uh, do its last musical beat, uh, I will probably replace it with uh, with this. Uh, if this is this is that good. So uh, a couple things. When you turn it on, turn to crank up the volume. There's a delay, and one of the reasons you might want to have that delay is what I was talking about earlier with the uh, the pop that you could sometimes get with these uh, these little Class D uh, uh, chips, the Texas Instruments chips that they used in here, TP I don't know what the 3116s or something. Um, so that's that's there. Also. Um, <laughs> The sub output is actually controlled here. So I got the, this is a line out, is continuing to go into the amplifier. When I turn the amplifier off, I got nothing on the sub. So it's definitely connected. Um, let's see what else here. And I would say that the volume is also connected to the sub out, which is very nice. Um, what else? The thing about the um, thing about the uh, Bluetooth connecting, even when you have it on aux, not true. I've got my my uh, phone with me right here, uh, and it's it's Bluetooth is turned on. This is not connecting. If I turn this over to the cell phone, the Bluetooth should come on there. It's picking up the cell phone now, and. Uh, it's connected, but no way is it true that when you walk into a room, so here we are with the cell phone here. Yeah, I think we got a little bit of, yeah, turn that up here a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting some Lenny Kravitz there. Um, not gonna happen. So if I switch it back to, to aux input, notice once again, when you switch, there's still a little bit, bit of a delay, which is, I, I think that's a nice thing. Uh, not a bad thing at all. Um, you don't want pops, so so that's good. Um, the the volume knob has detents in it, so they're, they're really small detents. Uh, it's a fairly stiff knob. If you hit it, you're not gonna you can't you can't just spin it by wagging your finger over it. Uh, and the same thing with the bass and treble controls. They have detents too. Nice touch. Um, what else? I still would like to have a power button separate from the volume so that when I turn it on it comes to the set volume. I don't have to set the volume every time I turn it on and off. Um, uh, really overall, all pretty pleased with this thing. Uh, I'm going to recommend it uh, at $85. It's, it's, it's well worth what you pay. Uh, and it really does crank out some power. Uh, these are acoustically suspended. Uh, these aren't really special in any way, shape, or form. These are very old speakers, but <laughs> unlike the other test speakers, I dragged out. These are, are not um, not blown. <laughs> so they sound great. Um, probably can't hear that from the camera, but uh, I'm really very pleased with what we have here. Yeah, um, really, really very pleased with this. So let's see here. What else could they do to improve this? Uh, beyond a power button, I can't say very much at all. It's, it's exceedingly compact. Um, it's very lightweight. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. The, the power supply literally weighs more than the amplifier. Uh, so, I do you like that? Um, that's the end of my review. I'm going to probably write this up and put it up so there'll be a written version of it. We still, I intend to do a technical teardown of this. I really want to get inside there and uh, see how it's laid out, see what they're doing. It's all going to be surface mount, so, you know, we'll have to probably get the inspection. Uh, inspection microscope out, try to even be able to read what's on some of the stuff in there. Uh, the same technology that's going into your, your cell phones and that kind of stuff, we're probably going to have a, a board that's got more than two layers on it. We'll see. It'll be very interesting to see if they've got a three or four or five or six or... Uh, my guess is they've got a two, possibly a three layer board. Um, surface mount both sides, uh, ground plane, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what we see when we get inside there. Uh, getting this thing apart would be, uh, oh, we're probably going to have to take the feet off of it. Um, other than that, can't tell you for sure. 
it might be one of those things where you, you've got some some um, some clips, some plastic clips. When you try to take it apart, you either break those clips or you can you can pry it carefully. Uh, we'll see if we end up wrecking the case when we take it apart. We'll definitely have to get in there, uh, <laughs> see what it's all about. Uh, I, I want to see where the uh, the crossover point is on the uh, on the sub out, and um, I'm really really pleased with it. Now it, it is plastic. There's uh, there's no noticeable aluminum. If if they had an aluminum front, I think that that would be an improvement. But it's still uh, looking pretty classy. It's got a high gloss plastic on the front here. Uh, it's got your your matte finish, but it's all no, the entire case is plastic. It's got rubber feet on it. Notice that it does have uh, vent holes on the bottom, vent holes on the side, and vent holes here. And I can tell you that there, there's a little bit of warmth coming off this. It's just, I mean, it's not even, like, <laughs> it, feels, it feels about the same temperature as, as, a, as a person's hand. So it's like when I touch the tabletop, I can tell it's like maybe 15 degrees cooler than this. But uh, this is probably running 80, 90 degrees. I can actually measure it with, a, with a, uh, an IR. Uh, thermometer I got I can just shoot it right at it here do that cylinder temperature on radio controlled airplane so yeah it's 87 degrees right here at the top and compare that to the surrounding table which is uh, 75 75 I'm getting 75 here actually I'm getting 70 over here so 70 uh, versus well geez yeah so 80 86 87 versus 70 yeah, 70.3 there. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, uh, pretty happy with this. Uh, so yeah, it, it's not running a, even 100 degrees. I mean, it, this is this runs cool, and that's that's the um, that's the effect of having that that Class D amplifier in there. Uh, runs cool, runs efficient. You get a lot of power out of it. You get a lot of sound out of it. I, I tell you what, um, we were. If I had to go to college right now, and I had to have something for the dorm room, this this would be the absolute bees and knees for the dorm room. Um, this is this is just fantastic. And I'm running flat. I'm running a. Um, there's no equalizer in here. I'm just using the bass and treble. This is phenomenal with a subwoofer. Uh, if you put a subwoofer on here, you are really going to enjoy this. Um, that's it. So long, and uh, thank you very much for, for watching this, uh, this video. All right, so um, what I'm going to tell you is this thing sounds dynamite. Um, I normally use this amplifier. Uh, I use this uh, equalizer. Um, and th this is the system that I use in my shop. And uh, these are, oh, geez, I think they're, they're pretty decent speakers um, for for average bass reflex speakers. They're uh, geez, uh, two way bass reflex. Um, it, they're really really nice speakers. I've had them for a long time. Um, I think they're actually made for Radio Shack. They're Optimus speakers. They're made for Radio Shack, but I think that they were made by Panasonic or Pioneer. I think it was Pioneer um, that made a lot of that Optimus stuff or RCA. I'm not sure. Either way, um, I'm really liking this now that I've got it hooked up to some nice speakers. Um, and once again, it, it rivals what I have here. Uh, this, <laughs> this is some, some hi-fi stuff. And uh, this guy right here is filling the shop with music. So um, I, I'm pretty pleased. What I would tell you then, uh, based on this experience, is that you want to use some nice speakers with this. Uh, don't use cheap speakers use use good speakers the speakers that i i pulled out um, i had in storage they would just sit on a shelf in another section of the shop and i thought they were good and i'm right now concerned that those speakers are really no good at all um <clears throat> so with a decent set of speakers you've got yourself a winner in terms of sound here for the price this thing is this thing is pretty doggone good i'm pleased with it in terms of of the uh, the sound the build quality uh, the features, um, the, the, the way it's laid out, the way it does what it does, uh, the Bluetooth pairing with a cinch, um, and it, 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 like the other devices that I have, now most of the time when I come down in the shop, 
I'm using another device by the same company, which I highly recommend. Um, <clears throat> and that is a, uh, a Bluetooth receiver and transmitter. Uh, what I would really like them to make, and I'm going to tell them this, is I want a repeater. What I, what I want to be able to do is I want to have one Bluetooth source and I want to have the, every Bluetooth speaker in the, in the house picking that one signal up. And uh, if they can figure out a way to do that, I will spend money on it. Um, either way, this thing is fantastic. And when any of my equipment, like this Adcom, and I've got another old, a really, really old Sony uh, surround sound receiver that I use for an amplifier out in the garage, I got some uh, Bose 301s. <laughs> yeah, I, I got Bose 301s in my, in my garage. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when that when that amplifier goes out because I leave it out there, you know, all all winter long, and this we I'm in Wisconsin, and uh, you know when it's 30 below, that one day a year in January, that uh, that amplifier is sitting out in the garage. This guy is what's going to replace that. Um, so yeah, uh, all in all, pretty 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 solid effort around all around here. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be back on the second half of this. Maybe I'll make a second video with the uh, with the technical review. It's actually going to be, believe it or not, <clears throat> a longer video. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to tear this whole thing down. I'm going to run it through its paces. Um, I'm going to inject known signals into it. I'm going to look at the output on the scope. Um, all sorts of things like that. So, so we have a lot of fun, and... <laughs> We'll get some of these big guns out and put this thing through its paces. What I do not have, anyone that wants to uh, feel free to donate a, an audio analyzer, uh, I think they start at about 8,000, um, especially if you get a really good uh, high-performance distortion analyzer with it. Yeah, I've seen them go all the way up to uh, like $30,000 for an audio analyzer. So if you want to send one of those along to me, uh, please feel free. I'd absolutely be very, very happy to have one. Uh, <laughs> Um, in any event, we'll do what we can with what we got and uh, see you guys on the other side. This is worth 85 bucks. If you need one of these, by all means, go and spend the money. You will not be disappointed.